Alright guys, welcome back to another video on Kerber Space Program. This is Designs of the Week episode 21 and we're going to start off with Aerotech Mark 1. Alright, here it is. It's a very nice cool looking design as you can see. I made a nice cool wing shape. We have quite a few engines back here, so about 8 turbojet. And as you can see we have a small hard point here which will help us lift up nice and early when needed to. I think we do have to go to the end of the one, right? Yeah, we do have to go to the end of the runway. So, voila. <laughs> uh, we do have REM air intakes there. Quite a few. I think they have been doubled up. Yep. And we have circular intake there. I don't usually use circular intakes, but just for this design to make it look more cool, I, I've done that. And this design does land. And we are going to see how high it can go and how fast. So, be right back. Now in the action groups, I have organized it so that if you press number 2, this aerospike rocket engine will turn on and off, so it will be toggled, and the same thing goes for these um, jet engines, if you press number 1, they'll turn, they'll toggle, <laughs> so yeah. Right now, let's uh, flatten ourselves out here, let's make sure we are sort of horizontal and remain on the 10 degrees there, right. And we are increasing very, very, very fast. I mean, look how fast that is. 1,000... What? Wasn't it more th than that before? Whatever. <laughs> and the flow, 5.U. Yeah. Let's check the highest speed achieved. Yeah, we did go 955 meters per second. And then it went back down to 700 something. I'm going to check that in the video. That was weird. Anyway, uh, let's... Flatten ourselves out a bit more. Let's check the REM air intake. Yeah, it seems good. Okay, let's press number two. Let's turn that on. That will give us a slight extra boost. We do have a lot of fuel tanks for that. So, yeah, but that should be good. Uh, let's exchange fuel from here to down there. Right, balance everything out. Seems good. Put the nose down again. Make sure that the RAM air intake does have a flow above 1U or more. If it has less than 1U, then you have a problem. You should turn off your jet engines. And right now, let's just flatten. Let's make sure we are 100% horizontal on 0 degrees. There we go. Let's right click that. Let's point the nose. Let's point down or something. As long as we remain on 1U. Yeah, it's gonna go crazy. Look how far. Look at down. You see how fast we're going? Look at that. Very fast. Okay, there we go. Let's hope this thing stabilizes itself. Alright. Let me assist it. Okay. Yeah, it's it's stabilizing. Slowly. Slowly, slowly. Alright. It's not that easy, actually. It's just moving side to side. Don't know what's going on there. Pretty sure those are off. Yeah, I've turned them all off. Alright. Oh, yeah, that's stabilized. Uh, let's check where we are at. Alright, looking good. Looking good. And almost 2,000 meters per second. Almost. That's very nice. Alright. Now, let's check the fuel here. Alright, we still have a lot. Yep, seems good. Let's go there. There's a... Okay. The U is still very low. So we can't do anything about that. Let's put the nose down slightly. And we have traveled across the ocean. How nice. Cool. We were there before, now we're all the way down here. Huh. Very nice. 2,000 meters per second. Seems as though we might get up, might orbit. Might. We have to be going 2,400 meters per second. And that's if I do everything correctly. And you remember, we don't have much of an airflow. 
and everything else is just dragged now. These are a major drags since they weigh quite a bit. I don't remember what they weigh exactly. But it's more than one ton, I think. I think. Oh, uh, the nose is going up. I'm not sure why that's doing that. Let me turn on the jet engines just for fun. Because I think this is all this aircraft can do. Yeah, that's all I can do. Can't do anything else, people. Cannot do anything else. That's the limit. Wait. Actually, well, we're increasing speed, and we are going up. Oh, that's good. We might actually orbit. I don't think it could do it. I doubt it can do it. 2,288 meters per second. We might actually end up orbiting. Oh, I thought I turned these off. Yeah, these are off. Why did I hear a sound? Oh, yeah, that's it. That's all I can do. That's its limit. So, suborbital flight. That's pretty good. Yeah, I like it. And a very high speed, 2,200 meters per second. Very good. For a heavy aircraft like this, yeah. Alright, let's just try and land it or crash land whatever happens and then we'll go on to the next design which is weaponized mark 1 okay guys this design is called double jumbo mark 1 I do have a mark 2 version which is the improved version this design is a failure but I will show uh, what the problems are and yes everything that I know about it. So first of all, it is going to the left. That's not what we want. I'm trying to make it go to the right. I don't think that's going to happen. If we can lift up now. Oh, lucky. SAS, lift up. And now. 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 Now, 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 now. Okay, you're fine. Yes. So, the problem with this design is it turns by itself. As you can see, it's turning by itself. And now I'm just trying to hold it. Make, make sure it doesn't you know, go to the left too much by holding E and D. But even that does nothing. I think it's because of the wings. Uh, the way I place these aren't that good. As you can see, it's a very cool looking design, but it's not efficient. We do have nuclear fuel engines. If I press number two, they turn on, on the keyboard, number two. And I think number one will turn off the jet engines. So make sure you have them on. Yeah, that that was just for extra boost do you guys see stuff look these there are struts from really far away from the actual aircraft look at that there's strut there strut there mid air struts not connected to anything this design is really glitched up glitched big time and if you're wondering how I replaced everything uh... it's pretty weird I might actually have to disconnect everything and show you how I, I did it in this space hangar but yeah this design is a failure so we're just gonna crash it left I tell you left no okay I'm just gonna crash it whoa whoa goodbye what okay well let's go for mark 2 the improved and fixed version but before that, let me show you how I placed everything. So if I remove uh, this, you'll see something. So what I've done is I've placed these um, score metallic blocks, <laughs> whatever they're called again, right, uh, cubic octagonal strut. So I just call them strut blocks. That's what I'll call them. Yeah, I placed a couple of strut blocks and then I placed this uh, MK3 fuselage, right? which all the way all the way down and all you do is using cheats you can just place it just like that and you know it looks pretty good no one would know so yeah that's that and let me show you mark 2 now obviously this is mark 2 so it's slightly similar to the previous design but it is improved and all fixed and this can is a suborbital machine so it is suborbital even I was surprised. Actually, that was my intention. My intention was to, to build a huge aircraft that was suborbital, and this is all I came close to doing. 
And that's what these nuclear fuel engines are there for. Nuclear rocket engines, I mean. Okay. As you can see, lift rating is good. It doesn't turn left or right by itself. And look at those pieces down there. Oof. Damn, that's going to cause lag. Yeah. And uh, the same process as before. If you press number two, these nuclear fuel engines will turn on and off. And same thing with the jet engines if you press number one. So, um, I'm going to fast forward and I'll be right back. Now, as you can see, we are going that fast that all the pieces are shaking. Look at that. And they actually look disconnected. Why disconnected? I didn't know it was disconnected. I have no idea what's going on there. Ignore it. By the way, uh, this this is a different design, of course, and it's connected via a probe. So if there's a... Oh, shit. <laughs> That's what I get for not checking. Yeah, it's connected via... Okay, let's continue on. <laughs> so, yeah, there's a probe there, and the same process as before, I placed the uh, strut blocks, as what I call them, right? And then I placed it, all the pieces onto those strut blocks. <laughs> uh, what happened here? Where did the parts go? <laughs> uh, you know, it's never happened to me, that... Okay, whatever. I'm going to restart that, and we'll see how it goes without smashing the pieces, Okay. In this view, it doesn't look disconnected. I just started it. Maybe it's because I fast forwarded before uh, when I was heading out to a higher up altitude. And maybe that disconnected the parts. So, yeah. Alright, we are back again. And as you can see, we are going super fast. 700 meters per second. And let's just continue checking the flow. I don't know before. I don't know how high we were before. I didn't check. I'm going to check on the video. Alright, uh, there we are. We're gonna lower down our angle here. I know there's not enough crew. There's nothing in there. Flow. Okay. Let's turn on the nuclear fuel engine. I don't know when. When should I do it? I don't know. It wouldn't make much of a difference if I turn it on now because we'd, we'd just be fighting against the atmosphere. And it seems as though the ship, the front part, is moving up. Yeah, and I was looking on the KSP forums, and they have some little spoilers of 0 0.19, the next update. It looks pretty good. They're just adding a couple more wheels, a few more other rover parts. That's all I heard. And some, obviously, the re-entry heat is going to be introduced. So I think, I don't know when or what part of the atmosphere, but if we have this big... Oh, uh, okay, that's its limit. It's my fault for moving it. I moved it just a little bit and then went crazy. What was it talking about? Something about re-entry heat. Yeah, I don't... Okay, I don't know what height, what, at what part of the atmosphere the re-entry heat would affect you. Maybe where my mouse is hovering, right about there. I think, I don't know. I'd have to test it when it comes out. Yeah, so that's smashed. Uh, there's one more part, one more craft I can show off. It's very small, simple, it won't even take long. It's actually quite boring, you guys wouldn't like it. Or maybe you will, I don't know. Anyway, this is called Black Star Mark II. Mark I is meh, not as good as Mark II, but they were both bad. And as you can see, these two jet engines turn on. We have a, This lifts up when we get to about 100 meters per second. Let's go with orbital view. Me like orbital view. Right, 100 meters per second. And what happens is we disconnect the top part and then the bottom part we can fly it around. And the whole point of this was to get this into space, but unfortunately there are problems with this design because only these engines are on and therefore this is pushing itself and the bottom part, but there's nothing, nothing else to push the bottom. How do I explain it? It's really hard to explain. I don't know all the terms. This is working. Right, these engines are pushing that top part. Right, but there's nothing really to push the bottom part. So, yeah, just have a look at it. Think about the design. Think about what's wrong with it. If I have this nuclear fuel engine, this nuclear rocket motor on, and these turbojet engines on, uh, because they have different thrust, it won't work out nicely. But right now, I won't be able to lift up if I hold down S. I've turned off SAS, and 
it's not lifting up at all. I cannot move it. It can. I cannot make it point up at all. So, yeah, it just doesn't go any higher than than this or something. So yeah, and it fails if you go any higher in the outer atmosphere. So, what I do is I s just press spacebar, right? And then you press spacebar again, and that turns on. That's what the goal was from the beginning, but unfortunately that didn't happen. So, yay! And let's just smash this to pieces. That'll be end of the episode. But yeah, if you don't understand what I was trying to say, because I was trying. <laughs> that was pretty cool. Yeah, it just doesn't work out, that design. doesn't work nicely. Maybe if I had the top part here much, much more larger. So if I used maybe MK2 fuselage and it was much more longer, then maybe I wouldn't have the problem. Maybe I wouldn't have, have had the problem, but yeah. Anyway, that's the end of the episode. Thanks for watching, guys, and see you next time. <laughs>